today's show. We break down what to watch for in Game 4 of the NBA Finals tonight. Will the Raptors control the game from the get-go? Who in the battle of the bigs? Can the Dubs pick up their D? And Lee joins us live from the Bay to discuss Clay's health and whether the Warriors are feeling the pressure. It's Friday, June 7th. The starter starts now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to the starters presented by Jack Daniels, old number seven, and Tennessee Honey. I'm Jay Skeets, alongside me as always, Tass Mellis, and we got the bearded one, Trey Kirby. Hey, oh, hey, yo! And joining us live right now from Oakland, it's the Aussie, Lee Ellis. There he is, Lee by the bay, looking sharp, but no sunglasses tonight. How's it going, mate? <laughs> Good, thanks. Yeah, it is a little bright out here, but uh, left the sunglasses at home today, so no sunnies. All right, let's get into it. Clay Thompson, Lee, he is officially back in the lineup tonight after missing all of Game 3 with that hamstring injury. What do you expect to see from Clay Thompson in this one? Well, this is really interesting because if the Warriors had won game three, I wonder if he would even play tonight. But because they're in this must-win situation, I think Steve Kerr knows that they probably have to go for it and, and risk it a little bit because clearly Kevin Durant is not right to go. He was ruled out early on. Uh, Clay sitting out game three. We know he didn't want to do that. He said he was ready to go. But this one is maybe almost like a little bit of a bargaining uh, tool here from Clay. He set out game three to say, maybe I have to play in game four, and that's what's going to happen. But if he's not 100% and if that hamstring is bothering him in any way, then it's going to affect his ability to shoot and score and to get to positions. We know he likes to move well without the basketball. And if he can't do that, if he's in inhabited in any way, then uh, maybe he won't be able to have the same sort of impact that we know Clay can have in big games. Yeah, all eyes will definitely be on Clay tonight. Another Warriors player that was injured in game two was their big man, Kevon Looney. Now, we were told he had, you know, a fracture near his collarbone and it, he was going to be done for the series. Now there are suddenly today whispers that Looney might be playing tonight. What do you know about him? Well, only from what Ramona Shelburn tweeted out, that he's been lobbying the uh, Warriors officials to be able to go out there and play. According to that tweet, the doctors have said he can't do any more damage to that injury that he sustained. We all thought it was a blo broken collarbone, as you said. Uh, clearly, that isn't the case. It must be something not quite as, uh, as nasty as that. So if he can give the Warriors any minutes, I'm sure Steve Kerr would love to have him out there because he's another body, he's another athletic big, and uh, someone who can help sort of chase off Marcus Gasol off that three-point line or double on Kawhi, whatever they want him to do. If, if he's available to go, that's great. But this is a uh, very very weird that it's gotten to this situation because Steve Kerr effectively ruled him out of the entire series after that game. So the fact that he's in this position tells us that uh, perhaps that injury was originally misdiagnosed. Yeah, officially questionable right now as we get closer to game four. All right, despite trailing 2-1, missing some key players, obviously, the Warriors actually don't seem all that concerned. They're a pretty confident bunch still. Do you think this game four, though, is a must win for the Warriors tonight? Probably not a must win, but certainly they would not like to go to Toronto down 3-1. But the, the fact I say it's not a must win because they have won championships. They know what it takes to win. And they also know what it's like when you're 3-1 up, that it's not a foregone conclusion right. anyway. So, you know, the pressure would be on, obviously, the Raptors to wrap this series up in Toronto if they were to take a 3-1 lead there. But Golden State just know that if they can maybe extend this series a little bit longer and if Kevin Durant is available to come back and Clay's injury doesn't affect him too much, then the Warriors will f certainly feel that they can, uh, you know, win the championship still. So I think that belief that they have of knowing, you know, that, that it, it takes, you have to win these four games. You can't just win two or three and think that it's just it, you can close it out easily from there. You have to finish it off is what really the Warriors use as their motivation to know that they're the ones who have done it, whereas the Raptors have never been in this position. And sometimes when you've never been there, you might tense up a little bit. We all know how the Raptors sometimes go in the playoffs. I mean, this is a completely different Toronto team than what we've seen in years gone by, but no Toronto team has been in this position, even though Kawhi Leonard is a champion himself. So there is pressure on, on Toronto. If they can take this series 3-1 tonight and go home and, and give themselves a chance, that's great. But if it's 2-2 and the Warriors have some players to come back to, uh, to the team, mainly Kevin Durant, then the pressure, I think, really amps up on the Raptors. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, Lee, last show, you asked people to heckle Drake, to go at Drake, to give it their best. What else are the people outside the Oracle Arena talking about? Well, as we know, this is the first time the Raptors have made the NBA Finals, so I wanted to ask Americans what they know about Canada and Toronto. Guys, this is the first time we've ever seen a Canadian team in the NBA Finals. Yeah. What's the weirdest thing about Canada or Toronto? 
French fries, gravy, and cheese. It's kind of good, but man, that is not good for you. I believe that their Thanksgiving day, it's a weird day. I've been there on Thanksgiving before. It's not the same as ours. I don't know, eh? Sorry. Just accents, man, you know? I know they play hockey. I mean, who likes hockey these days? This is sorry for everything, even though it's not their fault. Yeah. yeah. That's bad, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I heard they was nice people. Too nice? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit suspicious of them if they're too nice. They not like Warrior fans. They friendly. I think their whole Jurassic Park thing that they have outside the arena, that's a little... I mean, they're energetic, but nothing beats the roar call. I know one thing that's weird that they do, and they better not do it here, is leave their doors unlocked at home. <laughs> I think the Canadians are very nice people in general. They speak a little funny English, but otherwise... What, what words do they say that are funny? Eh, the whole time, eh. <laughs> hey, it's cool, eh? Raptors, eh? They're in the championship, eh? Drake, eh? No, it's Aubrey, eh? Yeah, they you want to say A a lot. A. No taxes? No, they do pay taxes, yeah. Oh, OK. Then I don't know that. <laughs> well, it's not really weird that they don't pay for, like, health care and education. I, I'm just jealous, quite honestly. I mean, that would be, yeah, call it weird, then fine, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of normal, though, really. It should be the way, isn't it? Right, and maybe we're the weird ones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go, that backfired a little bit, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're the weird one, says the guy in the giant blue wig and giant glasses. That's my favorite one yet, Lee. Great stuff. Friendly people down there in Oakland. Yeah, uh, that's a good thing about this series is uh, there's, a, there's a good rivalry, a healthy rivalry. We're seeing a lot of the uh, banter between the fans, uh, you know, cheering with each other, but nothing's getting nasty. You know, that's what's great. All right, well, Lee, your, your Game 3 challenge was to find a celebrity, take a selfie, you had Jay-Z and Beyonce in attendance, but in the end, you went with Warriors security guard, Jeannie, who's now our favorite celebrity out there in the world. But look, you gotta do a little bit better we want here in game four, your challenge. We want you to find your NBA Finals media member doppelganger. There he is. We don't even know this man's name, but he looks a lot like you. Got uh, Lee, we want you to find him. Take a picture with him at the very least, but maybe, you know, do some bar three exercises together, share a banana. <laughs> I don't know, something that Lee Ellis would do with Lee Ellis. Do you accept yeah, the challenge? I don't, know if I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna bust out some bar three moves <laughs> <Why not>? the, <laughs> after the game with some. <laughs> okay, but, but I'll see, I'll see. Do you know, do, do you know who <laughs> we're talking about, though? Do you know who yes, he is? Yes, 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 I do know, I do know. I have seen him around, so I'll see if I can track him down. Okay, He's well, a local, a local uh, reporter, so he should be here. Good luck. I can't wait to uh, see you on the next show. You doing bar three with Jeannie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Beyonce, Beyonce apparently isn't coming tonight. Okay, well, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. <laughs> All right, enjoy the game, Lily. When we return, we're going to discuss what to watch for tonight. Don't go anywhere. The Starters is presented by Jack Daniels Old Number no. 7 and Tennessee Honey. Game four tips tonight in Oakland, 9 p.m. Eastern on ABC. The dubs are on the ropes a little bit, but Clay Thompson, he's going to be back in the lineup. Dubs are feeling confident, so let's discuss what to watch for in game four. Tass, why don't you get us started? What are you going to have your eye on tonight? How the Warriors come out early in this game, because I'm not sure how confident this team is. This flow team, it doesn't have their flow. You know, Since the end of game three, they've been talking a lot about implementing new parts and different parts because they've had so many starting lineups this postseason. And it's been tough on them. Mm -hmm. And you might say, well, Clay Thompson is back. They should feel good. But Clay Thompson could get off to a slow start. Steph might not have a great start. And the way they started game three, they're just not right. And the Raptors just have to force them to continue to feel not right, right. by playing great D and also having good shots. I mean, you, you watch everyone outside Steph Curry early in this game. They just weren't feeling good, and it was affecting the other end as well. The Raptors just can't give the Warriors control of this series. They're gonna, they have to play well enough for the Warriors to take this series yeah. if they're going to take it. So it's, it's up to the Raps, I think, just to play very good and not let the Warriors feel good. We asked uh, Lee this. What do you expect from Clay Thompson tonight? I expect him to be great. You do? <laughs> yeah, because okay. yeah, he's That'll Clay help Thompson. Chances. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, honestly. Because you, yeah. you talked about even him being out there at 50, 60, 70%. That's still Clay Thompson out by the three-point line, and he's always a threat. 
to, to yeah. knock it down at a 40. Yeah, the rest probably, the, I assume the rest really helped. Right. And he should feel good on both ends. And we knew right away that Clay Thompson was going to be back for game four. I think that does give the Warriors a little bit of confidence No, going into the game, knowing their game plan. He was a game time decision yep. for game three. It seemed like maybe he will play, maybe he won't. That's probably got to be hard for the Warriors. Now they're going in knowing here's our starting lineup. Here's the team we're going for. Draymond said they play better with their back up against the wall. Their back is up against the wall now. They have to win this game. I know Lee doesn't think it's a must win. I do think it's a must win yeah. for the Warriors. So I'm assuming uh, the Warriors will get into their flow a little bit easier. I think it'll be a little bit more strength in numbers rather than just the Curry show. You guys think sure. this is a must win for the Warriors, even let's say KD comes back for game five and they're down in a 3-1 hole. You don't think that this team could still do that? They definitely can. They're that capable. But that's just another guy to implement. And Kevin yeah. Durant... If he comes back in game five, that'll be 33 days since the last day game he played. That's a lot of time off for any human being. This Raptors team is just playing really, really well. Yeah. And for them to have two opportunities at home, yeah, I think the Raptors will take care of business if they're down 3-1, or up 3-1, or down 3-1, or up 3-1. <laughs> Trey, what do you have for what to watch for here in game four? Uh, centers may be the last position you think of with either of these teams, but the big boys have been instrumental <laughs> in getting wins. For the Warriors and for the Raptors, for the Raptors, it's which Marcus Saul are you going to get? Because we've seen three different ones basically so far. Game one, he was really aggressive. He was hitting the threes, 20 points. Kind of caught the Warriors by surprise. Huge in the win. Game two, six points on two of seven shooting. Looked like he was just happy to swing the ball the other side. And then game three, it was grit and grind Gasol. He was going right at Boogie Cousins. Kind of played Boogie off the floor. 17 points, including five buckets in the lane, which we kind of don't see very much from yeah. Marcus Gasol. On the flip side, will Boogie be able to contribute at all? Game two, he was awesome. Almost had a triple-double, 11 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists, but he played 28 minutes. That came at a price because in game three, he didn't have much lift. It didn't look like the Boogie that we saw during the regular season. It didn't look like the Boogie we saw during game two. Now, this is the quickest turnaround in the series to game four. Mm -hmm. It's been 48 hours since game three. How is his body going to respond? That's a huge ask for a guy that's going to be playing his fourth game in a month and a half. You want Boogie Cousins to be your third best player tonight? That's tough. Yeah. yeah. And will the Raptors attack him like they did in game three? I thought they really went at him, tried to put Definitely. him in pick and roll. Just try and put that big guy in space, who's already limited a little bit defensively, even when he was an all-star, you know, DeMarcus Cousins. Yeah. But now coming off the injury, the quad injury especially, you're asking this big dude to, to move around and move, do move laterally and move quickly and make decisions quick on the defensive end. That's that was a lot to ask, and he sort he got played off the floor. But he looked he looked so good in game two. Even defensively, he was right up in Marcus Sol from the mm -hmm. get go. He he basically said from the opening position possession, I am going to beat this guy, and he dominated. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he dropped off big time from one game to the other. As we should expect from a man who's 285 pounds, I guess. But will he come out uh, and? allow Steve Kerr to just play him because Steve Kerr may have to yank him pretty quick because mm -hmm. this definitely feels like a must-win game. Does he go to Andrew Bogut? And then does he go uh, to uh, Jordan, Jordan Bell? Bell, who was beaten bad in Game 3 on a couple of possessions, so he had to give him the quick hook. Now we have this Kevon Looney news that he wants to play. He's right. lobbying to play. Will he be right? I assume you know the legs are entirely fine because mm -hmm. he just took a shot you know, up to the collarbone. So you think that he would be athletically fine Will Kevon Looney play a lot of minutes? There's just a lot of, of parts that he's got to throw in there. They've got the talent, that's for sure. Yeah. But will they be off? I mean, the Raptors just have to put the pedal to the metal right from the get-go. And sticking with the big boys, as you call them, Serge Ibaka, he had a rough first half, I thought, mm -hmm. in Game 3. But Nick Nurse, he stuck with him. And he delivered both on both sides of the ball in Game 3 down the stretch in the second half. I mean, a lot of those blocks were coming late in that game. And even scoring, they went to him a couple times, got some big rebounds to sort of just to sort of steady the ship a little bit when the Warriors are making those little tiny runs. The Raptors' bigs were much more active in Game 3 than the Warriors were. They, none of the Warriors' bigs between uh, Bogut and Boogie Cousins could put together 10 straight minutes of playing well. You know, it might be four good minutes, and then the next six are a little bit of a disaster. I guess getting Kevon Looney back, maybe they just have more options. Guys have to play fewer minutes so they can go a little bit harder for the six or seven minutes they're out there. Here's, those guys were all shining. It was crazy to yeah. see Surge in the first half. Yuck. And then in the second half, you know, with those six blocks. Yeah. Every single Raptor who played, I guess aside from Norman Powell, why do I have to pick why a Norman Powell? Why do you keep Powell? going on Norman? I don't know, because he didn't get the fist bump. It's yeah, just funny. So. It's That's just right. funny. But well, watch Norman Powell come out tonight and have a there, big game. He needs a big game today. It's possible. Uh, here's what I'm watching in, in game four here. The Warriors defense. The Warriors' defense. This is what has helped them win a lot of these titles. I know they're one of the greatest shooting teams of all time. they got these Hall of Famers that can put 30, 40, 50 up on the board. But they've won a lot of these championships because they've been great at defense. And so far, you know, outside of a few quarters, I would say, in the finals, they haven't been that great. And Klay Thompson coming back, you know, you're gonna, you put him out the three-point line, you think he's going to knock a couple down. 
but they really missed his defensive presence in Game 3 because they found success in the second half of Game 2 when Clay was on Kawhi, and then Iguodala's on Siakam, and then Draymond's sort of on Lowry, and he can roam, and he can be a free safety. So that was big. Can Clay give them that? You know, not only the scoring here in Game 4, but the defensive presence. And can they get some stops? 109 is the magic number when it comes <laughs> to the Warriors. Steve Kerr has talked about it a couple of times. That's enough to win. That should be enough to win in finals games, but you got to stop the other team, obviously. The one game they did that, they got the game two W. Didn't do it in the other two. That's sort of a bit of a magic number there when it comes to can they slow this, you know, obviously very talented Raptors team. They did really miss him in, in, in game number three, and just watching those highlights right there got me worried as a Raptors fan. Right. Clay Thompson is that good. He can affect the defensive end. They were lost in game three on offensively and defensively without that steady presence of Clay Thompson. He, I, I don't doubt him, you know, and his toughness. Exactly right. And he just stabilizes their team. He, if yeah. he's guarding Kawhi, like you're saying, Skeets, Draymond Green is allowed to help. And if he's able to help, there's just going to be a lot more cohesion, a lot more talk from the Warriors. They're going to be in the right places more often. It seemed like there was a lot of gambling from the Warriors in Game 3. Perhaps they were just trying to get out on the break, get some easy buckets. I assume they'll play a little bit more uh, button-down defense tonight. Hopefully, if Klay Thompson is able to stay on the court, allowing Draymond to do his thing. And he just takes away minutes from some guys that are not even as good as Clay. if Clay's even at 75%. You yeah. know, heavy minutes for guys like Cook and McKinney and stuff like that. That's just going. Those are minutes just going to Clay Thompson being out there. The other magic number to watch for tonight is 15 three-pointers. Whoever hits that first, I think, is going to win game four if one of these teams get to it. Because game three, Raptors, 17 three-pointers. That's huge to do in a finals on the road, in the Roracle of all places. And that, when they hit 15-plus, the Raptors 24-4, and four, including the playoffs this year. You flip it around, the Warriors, when they hit 15-plus, 28-3 this season. It's a bit of a magic number there, and the Raptors have shot it a little bit better. They shot, get up a lot of attempts here, which is great for them, and they've hit it a little bit better than the Warriors so far. Sometimes it's just about the ball going in. Yeah, That's what it, it's huge. I, one last quick thing about Clay. I think he should be applauded for sitting Game 3, because there's lots of ridicule out there on that dumb social media platform sometimes called Twitter, where people are just railing on Clay for being soft. He wanted he was, to play. Yeah, he was asked to sit, <laughs> and yeah, they lost that little battle in hopes that they win the war, but people are just saying, well, he could have played. Uh, and and from, from actual athletes out there, there's right. some, been some ridicule. Very, not very not just from eggs, from real people <laughs> out there. And, and that just angers me. Right. Yeah. Get it off your chest. Soft. Glad you got that off your chest. When I love eggs. Back. When we come back, <laughs> <laughs> will Katie even return at all for these 2019 finals? We'll discuss that more after the jump. Back with the starters. Time for Is This News. I've rounded up some recent NBA headlines. I'm going to pitch them to you like I'm Craig Kimbrell. And we'll determine whether or not they're actually newsworthy. I'm bringing the heat. <laughs> First one. Coming by way of the score. Shout out to the score. Steve Kerr saying there's a good chance Durant plays in game five or six. Is this news? Uh, I, you know, I really want to just see him practice first. Okay. But I think Steve Kerr is pretty confident here. He's not saying there's going to be a game seven. Ooh. He's saying five or six, we're going to see him. And after all the hullabaloo the last few days, all the talk, you know, the re-ask Steve Kerr, because Steve Kerr said, well, he's probably going to play in game four, and yeah. blah, blah. It's been going on for a while, seemingly. And for him to come out and say he's going to play in game five or game six, that seems like he's extremely he confident. A good, good chance, chance Tess. That's why it's news to me when Kevin Durant actually steps on the court. The constant updates to me feel a little bit like the Warriors want to keep the Raptors guessing. Do we need a game plan? to play against Kevin right. Durant in Game 5 and Game 6. Are we going to be going to a Game 7? They're worried more about Kevin Durant. Is he actually going to come back rather than seeing him on the court? When we see him, then it will be news. What about the conspiracy that it's not his calf at all, that this is actually an ACL injury and it's much, much more serious than we were led to believe at the beginning of when, when he injured it? Yeah, yeah, that because you were you're on record saying you didn't think or your bold prediction, I guess, was that we wouldn't see the KD at all in this series. Yeah, and we've heard multiple people, as you said, yeah. allude to the fact that it's far worse uh, than it actually is. Yeah, I got no idea. Yeah. I mean, we're just sitting here, but I, I do agree that uh, they could just be playing gamesmanship. I mean, that, yeah. that's definitely a possibility. Absolutely. All right, our next headline is coming from Bleacher Report. Kawhi Leonard. I wouldn't be playing right now without load management, said this to Rachel Nichols from The Jump. Is this news? 
Yeah. You, you. This is great news for Raptors fans. I in agree. this week, we found out that Kawhi Leonard purchased a property in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's opening mm -hmm. a restaurant. He also likes the way that the medical staff is treating him. That was the reason, basically, that he left San Antonio. They didn't handle his, uh, his quad injury from a couple seasons ago the way that he thought it should be handled. Right. Clearly, he thinks the, the work the Raptors did this year, having him play only in 60 of 82 regular season games, catching no flat for the load management, it's worked out perfectly. You gotta be confident if you're a Raptors fan. Just show Kawhi Leonard yawning on the bench there. <laughs> oh, load management, this is cool. I get to sit out a quarter of the season. Yeah. Uh, you bet this is news, I, I totally agree, because he's crediting Alex McKechnie and that staff yep. there for giving him what the Spurs absolutely did not last season, at least. I think this has earned the Raptors a short-term contract. I'm buying it, baby. Really? I'm, I'm buying the property purchase, <laughs> just like he's buying. I think he's going to buy a Tim Hortons franchise. <laughs> just one franchise. Start small. Yeah, yeah. Starts small. But, yeah, I, I think he'll, you know, he could uh, make his splash in free agency next year when it isn't as big, aren't as big of names, I should say, uh, in 2020. Yeah, I'm, I'm buying that he's loving everything about Toronto, especially in contrast to what happened last year. And he, he likes this scenario that's been uh, introduced to him this season. Yeah, I think one thing that's maybe forgotten, too, when he was going through this last year with the Spurs and only playing the nine games and sort of the back and forth be with what appeared to be yeah the Spurs medical staff and, and his people disagreeing and you know all that, is that the Spurs, some of the Spurs players came out and they sort of questioned Kawhi himself, and maybe that was what you know. That's when you lit the match and burned the bridge right there, and you were never coming back from that. But we didn't hear anything at all from any of these other Raptors players, you know, you know, questioning whether this guy should be going. Why is he out there with yeah. us? And I think a big part of that, and I've said this before, is the Raptors played really well without Kawhi Leonard this year. They, they won a lot of games when he wasn't in the lineup. I think it would have been a different story if, you know, they weren't 17-5 and five when he was out. And instead they were 5-17, and 17, let's say. They're obviously a great team, so they weren't going to be that bad. But I think we would, maybe we would have been hearing some whispers from some of the other players. Definitely. Like it would have been easy for guys to say, yeah. how are we supposed to perform in the postseason when we haven't had our team together throughout the entire season? But obviously that's not the case. Game it's four happy. tonight, Friday night. It's already here. I love that. A one day off in between. Big game. Wraps up 2-1. Quick predictions, guys. What do you got? This going 2-2 or you got the wraps up 3-1? I got the Warriors tonight. 2-2. Two, two. I'm with you. I think it's going 2-2 two, two as wow. well. Wow, even Skeets yep. going with the even Warriors. Even me, the Raptors homer. <laughs> Drop podcast sub. It's available. Download and listen to it. Guys, enjoy your night. Thanks for joining us. And remember, a dynasty doesn't end until it actually ends. Brace the weekend, people. <laughs> <laughs>